And throughout the meanderings of church history, Christians have believed and they have announced to the world that Jesus Christ is the unique, the one, the final, the absolute savior of all humanity. Absolute highland, as Ronard taught us. If I might make the point inappropriately, <laughs> now this is inappropriate, but I spend good time in Rome. Um, to ask Christians to give up their belief that Jesus is the only savior would be like asking Italians to give up pasta. It's part of who they are. It maintains their doctrinal continuity with the past generations, and it provides this belief in Jesus as the one and only, the energy to be a disciple of Jesus and to follow him. Therefore, most Christians, maybe I'm exaggerating, would insist that the assertion that Jesus is the only savior, based on the belief that he is the only son of God, is, as John Taylor puts it, simply a non-negotiable. It's not even on the table. Can't talk about it. Um, now, what I am calling the legacy of Christer Stendhal would challenge whether that is true, whether this understanding of Jesus is non-negotiable. He would smile kindly. How many of you happen to know Stendhal or meet him? So you know, OK. He would smile kindly and ask his fellow disciples of Jesus to sit down and take another and more careful look. Such a look would be motivated by what Stendhal identified, along with Robert Wright, as the global and self and life-threatening dangers of a zero-sum religious claims of final superiority. The supersessionist drive leads religious people, he's still a quote from Stendhal, into adversarial patterns where the younger has to trump and trounce the older. He provides examples of the workings of supersessionism that expand its dangers well beyond the perils for Judaism. I quote Stendhal, there is Abel over Cain, Isaac over Ishmael, Jacob over Esau, Joseph over his older brothers, Israel over Canaan, and the pattern continues, not only church over synagogue, but Islam over Judaism and Christianity, and Protestants over Catholics in the Reformation, Christianity over all other religions. In no case is complementarity or coexistence an option. There is always the claim to exclusive legitimacy. Overstated? Stendhal describes such supersessionist non-zero claims to exclusive legitimacy in rather uncharacteristically harsh language. He usually is very kind. He calls it the ultimate arrogance in the realm of religion, unavoidably leading to spiritual colonialism, spiritual imperialism. Close quote. This, now this is, this and this, some, I know many of you know this. According to Stendhal, this is what so upset St. Paul in the first Christians of Rome. Namely, he calls it, quote, their attitude of superiority and conceit, close quote, toward their Jewish brothers and sisters. This is what stirred Paul to write chapters 9 to 11 in Romans, according to Stendhal. The, 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 the chapters that deal with the mystery of the abiding election of Israel. Stendhal wryly gives his own description of what Paul was doing in these chapters 9 to 11. I love this sentence. It is as if Paul did not want them to have the Christ flag to wave since it might fan their conceit. So he summarizes the problems of supersessionism. I just give you these further quotes. The road taken, the road of supersessionism, one religion replacing another, has proven to be a dead end, even a road to death. We are heirs to traditions that have, it seems, in their very structure, the negation, if not the demonization of the other. So the serious theological question is, what to do? How do we counteract the undesirable effects of the supersessionist instinct? It's kind of arguing from ethics to doctrine, uh, from ethics to, to theology. Note, he defines supersession not just as an ethical issue, but as a serious theological problem. 
If we're going to avoid negating and demonizing others, we're going to have to do some serious, difficult, unsettling theological reconstruction. 